Hey everyone, and thanks for watching. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the offset function in Excel to transpose a string of values from a vertical string to a horizontal string, or likewise from a horizontal string to a vertical string. Now, I occasionally see this happen. Oftentimes it's when you're merging data from another source, or maybe you use the methodology on one worksheet and a different methodology on another worksheet. And really what you're trying to do is link to uh, a string of values that are say in a vertical column, such as this example here, only I wanna link to it such that the output is horizontal. And your first option, and by the way, this is the most efficient from a processing standpoint, but it just takes a while. Uh, is just to do this one by one, right? So you go equals here. So what we're trying to do, right, is where we have this, this string of vertical cash on cash return outputs. And I just want it to be visualized horizontally. And so again, I go equals there, and then year two, year two, year three, year three, year four, year four, and so forth. Now, it wouldn't take that long to do this on, in this case, a 10 year string of, of values. But what if you say had a 120 uh, period string of values and, and you wanted to, to speed up this process or perhaps you had uh, several different line items. So in this case, I'm only bringing over cash on cash return, but maybe we also wanted to bring over our cash flow after financing uh, row or our uh, equity invested row. And so we wanna speed up that process. Now I should, uh, mention, and I, I mentioned this in the blog post uh, attached to this video, that the downside to using this offset function, uh, similar to uh, using, say, a VLOOKUP or an index a match or even like a RAND function, is they're volatile functions, meaning anytime Excel recalculates a workbook, that particular cell gets recalculated. Even if the values or uh, inputs that affect that cell don't change, nonetheless, that, that uh, cell, that function, that formula gets recalculated. And if you have too many of these volatile functions, it will slow your workbook down. Now, I should say that Excel has done a great job over the last couple of years to uh, uh, make the functions themselves more efficient. The back end of what's happening in the calculations make these volatile functions more efficient, uh, as well as computers have gotten more powerful, such that in most cases you don't notice uh, when you have a lot of volatile functions. But if, if you have a huge workbook with a lot going on, if you use too many of these, then you're, you're running into issues. And so this would be an example where we can speed up the process of transposing from vertical to horizontal but if you're dealing with a large workbook, you may not want to do that. You may just want to uh, manually link these. But anyway, I, I digress and I apologize. Let me show you then how to use the offset function to do this transposing. And it's pretty easy. We, what we first need is a row of, uh, in this case, periods. And each period is li labeled one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. Now. They're labeled as years, but if you'll notice, if we come up in here to the formula bar, there's actually a numeric value assigned to each. Uh, one, two, three, and the label itself is built into, and I hit control one, the format cells box. I've created a custom cell formatting that just drops in a label, in this case year, before the numeric value. But from Excel's uh, standpoint, as it's looking at this cell, it only sees a one here, a two here, a three here, there's, there's a number in that cell. And so we can use that number in our offset function. So what I do is I go equals offset, and it first, first asks for a reference cell. Now, if you recall from other offset tutorials that we've done, uh, this offset function first starts with a reference cell, and then we assign a certain number of rows or columns to move away from that reference cell, and then we assign, if we want, a, a height and width to a range that the offset is calling. Now in this case, the range will be just one cell, and so we won't actually even use the height and width, but we will move away from our reference a certain number of rows. 
And that's so that we can grab whatever value in this string of vertical values uh, is it would apply to uh, the location or, or the value that should uh, be dropped into the horizontal row. So uh, reference, we start with just this cache on cache or really the cell immediately above our very first value in our uh, vertical column. We hit comma. And then it asks how many rows, either up or down, away from this reference cell should we go? Well, we want to go one cell down, all right? And so again, we are referencing C4, and C4 from Excel's perspective is the value one. So really what we're entering is one row down from that reference cell. How many columns, so I go comma, zero columns. We don't want to move to the left or right away from that reference cell. We just simply want to go one down such that it outputs 7.03%. Close parentheses. Now, one thing I noticed that I missed here, our reference cell itself, we want the cell to be absolute such that when we copy it to the right, that copy doesn't move our reference cell. So I just hit F4 one time, sets the row and column absolute but we leave the, uh, the row reference relative, such that as we copy to the right, it will move this reference to the right. Hit enter, and it outputs 7.03%. Now, if we copy, say, the entire amount to the right, copy and paste that. Now, if you notice here, it again uses this reference, but it goes down two rows, one, two, and drops out 7.06%. Come out here, it'll go seven rows down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Year seven, 7.24%, 7 7.24%. And thus we've used the offset function to transpose a string of values from column to uh, row. We could likewise go from rows to column using the same logic. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for your time today.